Good morning. Labour and the Conservatives have clashed on the issue of trans rights as the Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer said it was wrong to say only women have a cervix. The House Secretary, Sajid Javid, responded saying this was a total denial of scientific fact. Starmer called for laws to go further to protect trans rights after he was asked about one of his MPs, Rosie Duffield, who said only women have a cervix. Yes, now she's not attending the party conference in Brighton after receiving threats and being called transphobic. Starmer called for a mature and respectful debate good luck with that, about the trans rights issue. And as he warned, that trans individuals are among the most marginalised and abused communities. Well, let's talk now to Maya Fostata. Maya uh, lost her job after saying that people cannot change their biological sex and then later won an appeal against the action as an employment tribunal. She's now a fierce campaigner for women's rights and executive director of Sex Matters, which is an organisation committed to protecting sex-based rights in life and in law. Thank you very, very much for joining us, Maya. Uh, do only women have a cervix? Yes, absolutely. OK, well, thank you very much for joining uh, us, Maya. Thank you. Can I interject there? Because there is actually quite um, you know, a serious uh, issue, isn't there, here? And as much as I disagree with Keir Starmer, isn't the point that the basis of the question simplifies the issue? You know, do, do women have a cervix? Well, it's more complicated than that to some people because some people think you don't need to be uh, a woman to be called a woman. Yes, I think that's right. There are different people using words in different ways. So there are most people think that man means male and woman means female. That's the way the words have been used forever and ever. Um, and they're useful. We need to have a word for female people and for male people. Otherwise, we end up talking about um, bodies with vaginas, as The Lancet did this week, or, you know, people with cervixes, and it's dehumanising. But on the other hand, there are uh, a very small minority of people who feel uncomfortable um, being referred to by their sex. And of course, when they go to see their doctor, their doctor should be sensitive to the way that they want to be referred to. But when you talk about public policy or laws or statistics, you have to have a word for the people who need contraception, the people who are going to go through menopause, the people who uh, need cervical smears. And you can't break women's bodies down into um, separate organs. Mm. Well, what's, what, what, could, what could be the potential harm then? What could be the potential harm in, in just the suspense of scientific logic, as some would say, and just say, look, you know, hey, not all, it's not only women that have a service. I mean, what's the damage there, really, in saying that? I think if you, if you can't talk about reality in politics, how can you make good decisions? I mean, the, the harm that's being done to Rosie Duffield as an MP and to, and to many of her colleagues who are equally, who are frightened of speaking up, who see has, what's happened to Rosie Duffield and that her leader's not, not supporting her. Um, you have a culture of fear in the Labour Party and in Parliament over talking about just the very basic facts of life. Um, that's harm. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel, like, well, I would feel incredibly uncomfortable with anybody calling me a woman with... I don't want to say the word. A woman with a cervix, you know, a body, a, a female body or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, just yeah, me... a body with a vagina. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want somebody to clip a, picture, a video of me saying that and, and, and it go viral. But um, on a serious note, where does this end up? What's the logical conclusion of all this? Will it come to a point where midwives, for example, aren't even allowed to talk about the fact they need to help women, ha uh, you know, give mm. birth? I mean, where, where do you think this is going to end up? I think if we don't have words to talk about um, male and female bodies, bodies about men, men and about women's rights, then we can't we can't protect them. Um, as you say, midwives need to be able to talk uh, about women. Uh, policies need to be able to talk about women. There, there are all of the laws and policies that talk about pregnancy talk about women. Um, and Keir Starmer said. You shouldn't say that. So he was saying that all of those laws that say, um, you know, when a woman is pregnant or when she has maternity leave, she has these rights, um, shouldn't say woman. Um, and the MPs shouldn't talk about it. And if they do, uh, he's not going to he's not going to protect them. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we need I, I thought what John McDonald said, he said it's a question of context. 
And I think that's a good starting point. In what context do we need to talk accurately about sex? Mm. Um, and in things like women's refuges, women's prisons, mm. uh, women's single, single sex spaces, healthcare, all those situations we need yeah. to talk accurately about sex. In other situations where people want to identify as non-binary or agender or trans men or whatever they want, um, you know, nobody's stopping them. But where it's a matter of um, public policy or other people's rights, you need to be able to speak clearly. Yeah. Uh, a lot of talk at the moment is about safe spaces, isn't it? Especially when you're at a Labour Party conference, we all need a safe space. And it's all very well and good saying that, OK, hang on a minute, you know, if you're there saying that, that it's only women that can have a cervix, for example, you're creating an unsafe space for people who might differ. Well, hang on a minute, actually. A lot of people who do hold those views, they're the ones in need of a safe space, aren't they? Because they seem to cop a load of abuse from certain quarters. I imagine yourself, you've had quite a lot of abuse. I mean, are you the one who needs a safe space for your views, not the other way around? Absolutely. I mean, I, I didn't have a safe space at work. I lost my job. I lost yeah. my income. That's the ultimate of, of not being safe. Um, and Keir Starmer said, you shouldn't say that only women have cervixes. So he was saying that the belief that I hold that is shared with most people in this country, because it's the just the basic facts of life, you shouldn't say that, even though a court of law has now said that that's a protected belief and you shouldn't lose your job for it you shouldn't be harassed for it he was he was saying you shouldn't say that um and that makes workplaces unsafe for women particularly but for anybody who wants to speak the truth mm. well Maya for starter thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning I think uh, Maya's case really important because oh. it did protect uh, that that belief that w many women hold that only women you know have cervixes you know I don't women feel like someone like me has any right whatsoever to tell women what bits of their body they can call what, to be honest with you. And also it's a suspension of logic, isn't it? When I go on holiday, I don't identify as the pilot because we'd all, you know, be disaster, wouldn't it? You can't just suspend logic. But anyway, 